what I wanted to ask, I mean, I looked at the organization site and I get that you support single payer um, on every level. But what I'm, I'm interested in is like sort of the, the what's included in your state bill that you're pushing for, because it looks really amazing. And to me, that would be exactly what we would want to see uh, at a national level. So if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, what it entails in terms of, you know, people think, oh, it's just Medicare for everybody. Well, it's not that simple. It's mm -hmm. it, there's a lot more and it includes things that Medicare doesn't even include. So could you just talk about what what is included in whole Washington's plan? Yeah, that's kind of a tricky thing about when you talk about Medicare for all is a lot of people are like, well, Medicare is not that great. Right. And I just want to clarify that when you say Medicare for all, it's not Medicare as we currently understand it. It's actually a single payer system, no co-pays, no deductibles, covers, you know, healthcare, obviously, and vision and dental. It allows the government to um, negotiate for um, better pharmaceutical prices and that sort of thing. So when we formed Whole Washington, like I said, I'm a huge Bernie supporter. So one of the things we wanted to do was look at his Medicare for all bill and um, Pramila Jayapal's Medicare for all bill and um, model our system because we felt like that was the ideal system model our system after it. So it's got a lot of similarities to the national bill. We don't call it Medicare for all. And one of the reasons why is because, well, first of all, Medicare is a national plan, but also I don't like to have to go through that explanation when somebody goes, ah, Medicare only covers 80% of, you know, and I have to get all these supplemental plans. It's not great. Then I have, to say, well, that's not actually, we're not talking about that. We're talking about something better. So we call it universal health care. Um, I think that's clear to most voters when you're talking to them um, what that means. Uh, so that's that's what we call our plan, but it is very, very similar to the national plans. That's awesome. And it, and I know that like nationally, um, they have it, I believe, is it a four-year phase in? how it how it's done and um, how it starts opening up to, you know, different groups of people? Yeah, I think the Senate bill is different from the House bill in that respect. Um, Bernie's bill has a longer phase in um, and Pramila's bill, I think, is a little bit shorter. But um, I would have, I'd have to look and see um, the, the differences between those two. There are a few differences between those bills, and that's one of them is the phase in. Okay, so talk about what your timeline is in terms of getting this through, because I did see that that was posted on your site. I mean, I know that you you are not just talking about this, that there is an actual plan, which is why this is really cool. This isn't just, you know, a bunch of people talking about something. So would you talk a little bit about like what your timeline is, what you're trying to accomplish to get this plan through? Yeah, so we actually have a bill in the Senate right now with seven um, sponsors, which is more than twice the amount of sponsors we've ever had for our Senate bill, which is amazing. Um, but something interesting happened. Uh, we were very, very excited. We were the only universal health care bill, um, and it looked like the pressure campaign we had um, for certain elected officials who refused to ever let these bills out of their committee. Um, it was working. It seemed like it was working. Lots of people were making calls, um, sending letters, asking them to let this bill have a hearing. And let it out of committee. Well, a week ago, somehow a new universal health care bill that um, is only four pages long, and it uh, creates a commission to look at how we might eventually in 2026 have a single payer <laughs> program planned and passed, and maybe who knows how long that plan will take to implement um, so really, they they created this new piece of legislation to kick that can right on down the road because I th I feel like for the first time we we've, we've actually done letters to the editor we've been published three times already um, I feel like we were really really making um, some inroads and um, they were feeling the pressure and this is their way to to kind of combat that is um, and and either even more background to that. They just passed a study last session that took 18 months <laughs> and they decided not to do any recommendations after that study. So um, it's, it's been kind of a frustrating day and I wanna shout out to all of our volunteers who went to the hearing for that um, commission bill and told them, the healthcare committee, that we, we don't have time to wait. People are dying, they're going bankrupt, they're cutting pills in half, rationing insulin. And they're gonna say, let's wait till 2026 to introduce a bill when we have a perfectly good piece of legislation we can pass this year. 
but you can also do this through a direct ballot initiative, right? So, I mean, this is something that you're approaching from a few different angles, which is what I always think is the smartest way to do anything. Yeah, um, nothing's off the table. <laughs> we're we're definitely gearing up. We have, um, the last I checked, about 800 volunteers who have pledged to collect more than 200,000 signatures. So that's awesome. And that's something an initiative campaign really has never done before is have a bunch of pre-pledged signatures. So that's, mm -hmm. we're, we're off to a good start. The only problem is that, well, there are a few problems. COVID. COVID-19 COVID makes it really, really difficult to uh, collect signatures in person, which is required by state law here in Washington. We have to collect 350,000 signatures. And usually the way you do that is by going to big events like rallies, concerts, folk life festival, which, you know, about 200,000 people. Yeah. See? So, yeah. so <laughs> it's, it's difficult when you don't have those big events to attend. And also money is a problem. Um, whole Washington's a grassroots organization. We re rely on grassroots donors um, and printing petitions is really expensive. It's about a dollar a petition and there's wow. 20 signatures per petition. So if you do the math, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars to print enough petitions to get these signatures. Well, we'll do what we can to help you because For this sure. is a cause For that, sure. you know, I mean, at some point you just have to put your <clears throat> partisan politics aside. But I will say if they get if they get health care, I'm moving there. They already have that's recreational the, weed and yeah. death with dignity. And that honestly, those are like a, that's like a, you know, two for two. For, yeah, for but me. So, but again, you're talking about this is one of the reasons why they try to stop it from happening is because if. Washington state became the first state to pass, you know, a single payer healthcare system, they'll have like 5 million people trying to move into the they're state gonna like have, that. They're going to have an immigration you know, problem. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, whatever you want to call it, but it would be. And I, and I still think that's probably one of the reasons why it failed in California, even though everyone wants to, you know, of course, point the finger at one person. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.